Hi folks, my name is Petula, your host, and I can't believe it. It's April already. It is Q2. That's insane. But that also means that it's time for me to bring you another Agile principle. And today is Agile principle number four, the one that talks about bringing together business and technology. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Interesting, isn't it? Back then, the business people wore the suits and the developers were somewhere else in the company in a corner full of coffee and computers. And they would communicate mostly via proxy with memos and messages. Someone talks to a manager, a manager talks to you. And you know, why is it important to change that? Why is it important to have both business people and technology people working together? As you can imagine, there was a lot of uh, miscommunication and delays and especially business people not understanding technology and the technology folks having no clue about the business. But it was even worse with the salespeople having no understanding of the development process and then promising features and even dates that were simply impossible. Sounds familiar? That's because the situation has improved only marginally to these days. I've been recently in companies where the um, these two categories of workers, if you will, they really don't work together. Not only will they sit apart, uh, sometimes even in completely different buildings, they truly still don't grasp how each other's work. And you can even see that in a language gap where they can't necessarily understand some of the words and some of the concepts that the other group uses. Not to mention that technology keeps being seen as either the savior or the downfall of businesses. And in my opinion, it shouldn't be despolarized or detached from the business. Funny fact, do you know that the average tenure of a CEO goes from seven to 10 years, while usually the CIO is only four? Why do you think that happens? Because quite often CIOs are scapegoats for underperformance on strategy in organizations. You have senior executives, stakeholders, and members of the C-suite expecting miracles of the technology, ignoring entirely what happens there though. Underfund the technology department and then get surprised at the results that they get. Isn't that dangerous? This Agile principle really warns us on the dangers of chasms in this point of view. When you don't have synergies among your development and your business people, you are missing out on opportunities for product reputation, quality and performance, of course, but also in whole company process effectiveness, not to mention that you're missing out on the opportunity for creating new business models. Another funny fact, Forbes is saying that about 84% of those so-called digital transformations are failing in one way or another, despite over three trillions of dollars in investment. That's the proof that you can just throw money at the problem. I mean, you have the money clearly and you have the technology. So what's going on? I would personally go as far as saying that today technology is the business. It is a capability within the whole organization. It's not like a sub org that you have inside of the main org, which is a model that is still alive today. Technology should be seen as investment as well, not as cost. How about being customer centric then? Hmm, I'm glad you asked. There is no contradiction. Being customer centric today, it's about being digital and uh, heavily technologically powered because the customer of today and tomorrow wants everything online fast, one click away. So digital transformations are failing today because of the digital piece. It can't be ignored, but neither can the human piece the customer. It's about harnessing the power of technology at the service of those humans, the market out there of current customers and future potential customers. Because technology should be part of the business and so are the customers. I mean, it's almost impossible to separate them, the tech from the human. If you take any thriving business today from Tesla to Uber, you're going to see that they are focusing on improving human relationships, human relationships with the planet or with one another, or really just plain and simple focusing on solving real problems 
for their customers. So you might be wondering, what can you know the agile coach or scrum master, the the you know agile leader in general, do in organizations as far as the principle number four? I would say there's at least two things. One is to know these market data and make your people aware of them. Break the bubble by showing who is striking a winning balance between technology innovation and maintaining a human approach to doing business. The right information in the right years go a long way. The other thing is to help teams and departments to break their silos. When the development teams become aware on how exactly they are serving their customers, what are their pain points, they, you know, what's the impact of the cumbersome interactions with their product, they become much more autonomous and honestly heavily involved in trying and solving for the customer. I do give you more ideas on that front in the blog post down below if you're interested in continuing with those insights. But before you hop there, just pause and think. What is it that you think that you can do to help your teams, maybe your whole organization even, how can you support them in bringing business and tech together? That's it for today, folks. I'll stop right here and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye. Thank you.